to share with you a story about how I accidentally became the villain of a massively online game in real life. For the past four years, I've been running a video web series on YouTube called Feminist Frequency, where I deconstruct the representations of women in the media. I try to provide the tools to give people the language to talk about uh, sexism and issues of gender using accessible language from popular culture, such as uh, TV shows, movies, comic books, and video games. Now, video games are really interesting because it's actually the fastest growing form of mass media today. This is a photo of me at age 10 playing uh, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. So I've been playing games for quite a while. And uh, in addition to being a lot of fun to play, games have lots of positive benefits as well. So again, I've been playing games for a while, but there's something that's always kind of bothered me. It is no secret that the video game industry boasts some of the most sexually objectified, stereotyped, and downright oppressive portrayals of women in any medium. So with that in mind, I decided to launch a fundraising campaign on the crowdfunding website Kickstarter, where I would create a series of videos to look specifically at the way women are represented in video games. The idea being that if you were interested in the project, you could donate, and if you weren't interested, you could choose not to donate. It's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Turns out that there are a bunch of male gamers out there who were, shall we say, not too excited about this project. Now, I'm a pop culture critic, I am a feminist, and I'm a woman. And I'm all of these things openly on the internet. So I'm no stranger to some level of sexist backlash. I'm very, I've sadly gotten used to sexist slurs and sexist insults, usually involving kitchens and sandwiches. But what happened this time was a little bit different. I found myself the target of a massive online hate campaign. Now, the next couple of slides represent just a tiny fraction of the harassment I received, and they come with a very large trigger warning. All of my social media sites were flooded with threats of rape, violence, sexual assault, death, and you'll notice that these um, threats and, and comments were all specifically targeting my gender. The Wikipedia article about me was vandalized with sexism, racism, and pornographic images. There was a campaign to report all of my social media accounts, including my, my Kickstarter, my YouTube, my Twitter, um, and they would report them as fraud, as spam, even as terrorism, uh, in an effort to get them suspended. They attempted to knock my website offline, hack into my email and other accounts. They, collected, they attempted to collect and distribute my personal information, including my home address and phone number. There were images made, pornographic images made in my likeness being raped by video game characters and sent to me again and again. There was even a game made where players were invited to beat the bitch up, in which upon clicking on the screen, an image of me would become increasingly battered and bruised. You get the point, we'll move on. Um, what's even more disturbing, if that's even possible, than this overt display of misogyny on a grand scale is that the perpetrators openly referred to this harassment campaign and their abuse as a game. They referred to their abuse as a game. So, in their minds, they concocted this grand fiction in which they're the heroic players of a massively multiplayer online game working together to take down an enemy. And apparently they cast me in the role of the villain. And what was my big diabolical master plan? to make a series of videos on YouTube about women's representations in games. Yeah, so if they think of their abuse as a fun game, then let's examine this. Who are the players? Well, often when we talk about online harassment, we think of teenage boys in their parents' basements. And while I was attacked by some teenage boys, there, I was also attacked by thousands of grown men. And this isn't entirely surprising considering the average age of the male gamer in the US is about 30. Where is this game played? Well, the perpetrators turned the entire internet into a battlefield. So in my case, they came after everything and anything that I possibly had ever had online. They also have a home base where they coordinate their raids and work together and communicate. And this usually takes place um, on largely unmoderated, largely anonymous message boards and forums. And these are places with no real mechanisms for accountability. So what is the goal? 
Well, the immediate explicit goal is to stop the villain and save video games from me and my crazy feminist schemes. Um, and they tried to do this by silencing and discrediting me and my project. But the larger implicit goal here is that they're actually trying to maintain the status quo of video games as a male-dominated space. And all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. So what type of game is this? Well, it's fundamentally a social one. Now, we don't usually think of online harassment as a social activity, but we do know from the strategies and tactics that they used that they were not working alone, that they were actually loosely coordinating with one another. And this social, this social component is a powerful motivating factor that works to provide incentives for players to participate, or perpetrators, rather, to participate, and um, to actually escalate the attacks by earning the praise and approval of their peers. It's kind of like, we can kind of think of this as um, an informal reward system, where players earn internet points for increasingly brazen and abusive attacks. Then they would document these attacks, and they would bring them back to the message boards as evidence to show off to each other, kind of like trophies or achievements. So, we have this general structure of a social game, right? We have the players, we have the villain, we have the battlefield, we have you know, this informal reward system. But the thing is, it's not a game. It's an overt display of angry misogyny on a massive scale. It's not just boys being boys. It's not just how the internet works. And it's not just gonna go away if we ignore it. It's really not a game. So what is it then? Well, the usual terms that we use to describe online harassment, such as cyberbullying, cyberstalking, um, even trolling, don't adequately describe a hate campaign of this scale. What happened to me, and sadly to other women as well, can best be described as a cyber mob. And whether it's a cyber mob or a handful of hateful comments, the end result is maintaining and reinforcing and normalizing a culture of sexism where men who harass are supported by their peers and rewarded for their sexist attitudes and behaviors, and where women are silenced, marginalized, and excluded from full participation. A boys club means no girls allowed. And how do they keep women and girls out? Just like this, by creating an environment that is too toxic, sorry, by creating an environment that is too toxic and hostile to endure. Now, this is pretty grim and depressing stuff, I know, but there is another side to all of this. Do you want to know what happened to my fundraiser after all of that? Well, first, the cyber mob failed to silence me, as is evidenced by me being here today. Thank you. And it turns out that quite a few people are actually interested in a project that would deconstruct the representations of women in games and who are totally outraged at the harassment that too often plagues our gaming communities. I actually raised 25 times what I initially asked for. <laughs> Nearly 7,000 individuals contributed to make my Tropes versus Women in Video Games project bigger and better and more expansive than I could ever have imagined. Instead of just being five videos, it's now 13 videos plus a classroom curriculum that educators can use for free. Fem <laughs> Feminist Frequency went from a part-time side project to a full-time endeavor. I received countless messages of support and words of encouragement. People expressed their solidarity with me and my project publicly through videos, through fan art, through comics and blog posts. I've even been invited to speak at video game studios internationally. The overwhelming support that I received is just a small manifestation of a larger cultural shift looming on the horizon. A growing cross-section of gamers and game developers of all genders are fed up with the way women are being treated in gaming culture, and they're speaking up to demand change. Now, this change is happening slowly and kind of painfully, but it's happening. Every day, I'm encouraged by the women who persevere, who continue to engage, and who refuse to be silenced. I truly believe that if we work together, we can create a cultural shift where women, without fear of intimidation, 
without fear of threats or harassment, can be full and active participants in our digital world. Thank you.